Hello, today we will discuss capacitance and dissipation factor. So first we will consider capacitor and uh, we will understand what is a capacitor and what is a capacitance. Then we will go for dissipation factor and its measurement. So first question which comes in our mind what is a capacitance as all of us know capacitor is a device which can store energy in its electric field basically capacitor is a device which can store charge and as we know a charge creates electric field in its surrounding and if we consider a parallel plate capacitor then it will have electric field in between the two plates of the capacitor and therefore energy will be stored in that electric field. For understanding capacitor, we will consider the simplest form of capacitor known as parallel plate capacitor. A parallel plate capacitor is made up of two plates separated by some distance. Let's assume the distance of separation between the two plates is D and we are going to apply a DC voltage across the two plates of the capacitor then what will happen you just think what will happen I am going, going to tell you in the next slide as soon as we connect the two plates of the capacitor to a voltage source V voltage source is here DC voltage charges will start flowing from positive terminal of the DC supply to the positive plate of the parallel plate capacitor and same will be the case for negative charge so as the time passes the parallel plate capacitor will have positive charge on one of its plate and negative charge on another plate so mathematically we can say Q equals to CV here C is some constant which is known as capacitance so we can see from this equation that if the value of capacitance C is more then charge accumulated on the plates of capacitor will be more. So we can say capacitance is a property which specifies the amount of charge that can be hold by a capacitor. So you just see this equation I am going to ask you a question. Does the value of capacitance depend upon the voltage applied? Just think what will be the answer. You may say after going through this equation Q equals to CV that yes capacitance depends upon the voltage but actually it's not true. I am just going to explain it in my next slide. We will consider parallel plate capacitor. So if we see the value of capacitance for parallel plate capacitor it's equals to epsilon naught epsilon r a by d here epsilon naught is permittivity of free space epsilon r is the relative permittivity of dielectric d is separation between the two plates and a is the area of cross section of the plate so just see this equation of capacitance for parallel plate capacitor there is no term of voltage applied so we can say capacitance do not depend upon the voltage applied actually capacitance is the property of the capacitor but capacitance depends upon the geometry and dimension as well as the dielectric inserted in between the two plates of the parallel plate capacitor that's all so what we learned that capacitance depends only on dimension dielectric and geometry next what is the importance of capacitor? Actually a capacitor finds <coughs> much use in electrical engineering and terminology. If you get a chance to visit 765 kV or 400 kV switchyard, you will see grading capacitor in multi brick circuit breakers. The size of grading capacitor is huge and you have seen tiny capacitors in electronic circuit so you just think capacitor varies in size from tiny to larger one it means that 
it has a great use in electrical engineering and technology next question is that if i ask you to design a capacitor can you design a perfect capacitor it's impossible to design a perfect capacitor actually it's impossible to design a perfect circuit component if you want to design a resistor it will inherently have some inductance if you going to design a capacitor it will inherently have some resistance so if there is resistance in the capacitor then it will be lossy capacitor it will have some loss you cannot say it's a lossless capacitor as we know capacitor do not consume power but because of presence of resistance it will consume some power some power so it is very much important to measure this loss in the capacitor so in next slide we will see how do we measure this loss actually we measure the loss in the capacitor by dissipation factor so the question arises what is dissipation factor i'm going to explain what is dissipation factor by some figure just hold on and be patient just see this is a practical capacitor i have realized the practical capacitor by connecting a resistor r in parallel with the capacitor this is a real capacitor this is a practical capacitor which you find in the market and i have applied a voltage v across the terminals of the capacitor and uh, just drawn the phasor diagram of this circuit ic is the capacitive leakage leakage current ir is the resistive leakage current so net current will be vector sum of ic and ir so this i is the net current which equals to capacitive leakage current plus resistive leakage current just see this i is making an angle of delta with ic so just calculate tan delta tan delta will be equal to ir by ic means ir by ic means resistive leakage current divided by capacitive leakage current this tan delta is called dissipation factor and the angle delta is called loss angle so first of all we will calculate loss angle the value of loss angle for practical capacitor is very less you can say 2 degree to 5 degree and this tan delta is called dissipation factor so why called dissipation factor i am going to explain in my next slide now we will calculate the loss in the real capacitor so for finding the loss as we know loss equal to vi cos phi so cos phi is the power factor so we need to calculate the power factor of the capacitor so just going to the previous slide this cos phi this phi is equal to 90 degree minus delta so we will put 90 degree minus delta instead of phi so it will reduce to vi sin delta we can write i equals to ic by cos delta so it's equal to vi tan delta just see the dielectric loss is directly proportional to tan delta so we call tan delta as dissipation factor one thing which you must understand that tan delta will be equal to the power factor of the capacitor if and only if delta is very very small so we understood what is dissipation factor if anybody asked you what is dissipation factor you just say tan delta is known as dissipation factor and if anybody ask you why it is called dissipation factor you can explain because the dielectric loss in a capacitor is directly proportional to tan delta therefore tan delta is also known as dissipation factor next question is that what is the importance of dissipation factor actually in electric power system insulator has a great role to play as you can understand and think an ideal insulator behave like a pure capacitor having a slight capacitance and negligible resistance therefore it is very important to measure the dissipation factor to judge whether an insulator is healthy or having some impurities like moisture dirt etc etc suppose if a insulator have impurities like moisture dirt then it will have more resistive leakage current means loss in the insulator will increase it means that there is a chance of dielectric breakdown in the insulator 
Therefore, if you measure the dissipation factor of the insulator and the value of dissipation factor comes to be very low, then you can say the insulator is healthy and if the value of dissipation factor comes high, you can say uh, there are impurities and the insulator is not healthy at all. So next, we will understand how to measure the dissipation factor, how to measure the tan delta. Be patient, subscribe to my channel and follow me. I will explain this in my next tutorial, tutorial video. Thank you.